Yes, sir. <sighs> you smell that, Tim? <sighs> it smells like success. No, not really. Success <laughs> is not the first thing that came to my mind, dude. <laughs> it smells like a smelly year just left us in the past, bro. It's just smelling kind of stanky in here, bro. At first I thought... At first I thought you brought a smell from the whip, bro, since you've been... <laughs> Traveling yeah. around like something crazy, but the stench Ooh. of 2023 is now behind us, and we are back for the fifth ever episode of the Wild TSI podcast. My name is Jono. My name is Tim. And uh, you love to see it, baby. You love to see it. Hey, don't leave me hanging like my that, bad, dude. My bad. My bad. Listen, we we reshifted the set because you know we 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 just eventually decided. Here's the thing. We have this place set up so perfectly now. The we devil can't. tried to interfere with us again. Every time it seemed. The other day, bro, the yeah. end of the year, the devil was right, bro. He was not. Yeah, he was on our backside, bro. He was on our backside, bro. <laughs> to put it very nice. What a terrible yeah. end to the year. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> devil was on our <laughs> for show, bro. Bro, wow. I mean, you, the whip, dude. Yeah, the whip. Ooh, yeah, she's... She's showing the age a little bit, you know? Showing She's the showing age. it. But I think I, I feel good about being able to bring her back to life a little bit more. Yeah. She just she just needs some TLC. What type of TLC does she need? Bro, now that it's 2024, because we have to talk about some of our goals yes, sir. for the year. And it's clear that the whip is on your mind. So maybe this is like a good place for us to start is your goals for the whip. Since we spoke about the whip in the last episode, you said, I quote, it's one of the best oh, yeah. one-liners of all time, TB. What was that? You said, as long as the whip's rolling, <laughs> I'm rolling. I'm rolling. Yeah, yeah don't oh, right, yeah. dude. I'd put that on a t-shirt, bro. As long as the whip's rolling, I'm rolling. I'm rolling, oh. baby. Yes. You know, it was a very, um, yeah, it's been a tough end of the year, bro. Not gonna lie. But, the whip, she is about 200, no, maybe 120 miles away from hitting its all-time high. Which, to be honest, every time I drive it, it hits a really Wait, all-time high. I was about high. to say, that was the silliest <laughs> logic I ever heard. There was a moment that the gears turned in my head after you said it's going to hit its all-time high. And I was like, what is this guy talking about? Every mile he drives is the all-time high. Bro... <laughs> She's gonna hit two hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> Let's go. We rolling. <laughs> Wait, I so told you. I told you. As long as the lips rolling, I'm rolling. I'm Straight rolling. Up. I Straight called up. TV the other night. TV was working a late shift. Oh yeah. TV oh, yeah. was on the roads. I called TV. I was like, Yo, TV, let's go, baby. <laughs> as like, long as the rips rolling, you're rolling. <laughs> TV was rolling. You guys were all partying during New Year's Eve. Not TV. Oh no. We, we were supposed to hang out. You're one of the reasons why my New Year's was ruined. Oh, man. Hey, I came through eventually. No, and on the topic of this, since we need to restart this episode because I haven't complained about you yet, Tim. Oh, yeah. I'm very upset with you. Yo, you're the first person to complain about me this year. Damn right, boy. It's an honor. <laughs> it's an honor and a privilege, and I don't take this lightly. Tim, you yes. arrived early today. Oh, yeah. One minute early. One minute early. I was so unprepared for you. <laughs> I call it. I call it TB time, bro. TB time. TB time is 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 on its own time. It's real. I, I've been trying to fix it though. I, I have been getting better. Yeah. I was no? chilling. I was chilling. <laughs> I told TB to come at five thirty. So I went and just got in a little workout. You know, I went to get some soup. I got home. I was like, oh. Usually he says to me he's leaving and I know it only takes 15 minutes to get here, <laughs> but it usually takes him at least 45 minutes to get here. So if he says to me he's leaving and he usually sends me a message to say he's leaving before he comes. Not today. It was like he was out to surprise me and ruin my evening. <laughs> From you thought you had the extra 45, bro. Bro, yeah. I thought I had an extra 15 minutes walk around in my undies, bro. Oh, no. It's 2024. Let it air out, bro. No, I lied. It's a little too cold to let things oh, yeah, air man. out, but you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Bro, that's the... That private time at night, bro, that's just... <laughs> that's the best time of the day, bro. It's all you. When you got that time alone, bro, you can put on... You know, I said a trend. Uh -huh. I said a trend once. What you do? I was at a, a school that had 500 boys living at it for five years. 500? Yes. And it was quite cold in the winter times. So one year, 
you know, we all had like communal showers. Uh huh. There was like seven showers for maybe 30 of us. Six showers. And Whoa. everyone would usually just wear a towel. Wait, all at once? 30 people? There was six showers that were shared between like 30 of us. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, all, we all shared the showers. Whoa. And we had an attic where we used to like keep the towels. It was a drying room. Wow. You know, tin roof, attic, everyone's towel used to, It was crazy. People used to steal your towels and stuff. People used to smoke cigarettes in the attic. And oh. one time someone actually fell through the roof. But that's a, that's a story for another time. Oh, man. But <laughs> one year I decided to arrive with a night robe <laughs> because I'm the boss, bro. Why are you laughing? So you it's not funny. You're the only person in a night robe. Everyone else had on like white bath towels. Everyone had <laughs> waist towels. I rocked in the shower one day fully covered. It was a it was a nightgown towel with the fabric and everything, bro. You've never seen so many jealous guys. When it's cold, bro. Yeah, that's you know so. what the cold that's does? So. You know what the cold does to you, Tim? Please, you oh, don't yeah. need to explain this on camera. <laughs> now imagine 500 people experiencing the cold. Not me, bro. I was warm, baby. Oh man, I was warm. <laughs> I would arrive in like this. I'd sit there. I'd go in my shower. I'd wrap up again. I'd leave. Wow. And then next semester, suddenly everyone had a nightgown. I was like, hey, you started a trend right there. Started a trend. Wow. TV, something's going on here. Oh yeah, something happened. What happened? <sighs> I have more reasons to complain about you now. Now you're even standing in the way of my camera. Hold on, let me go sit in your chair. Look at this. Look what he's made me resort to. You hate to see it. Oh, that's quite a, dude, drip is hot today, bro. Oh man, thank you. I had to pull this one out the archives. Drip is hot, bro. Thank you, thank you. Mm. You know, sometimes you gotta start the new year off fresh. Dude, I'm like, we have to. This is basically the best we're gonna look all year. Yep. By the end of the year, <laughs> we're gonna be crawling on the ground. <laughs> right, don't look for me in October. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, October. October. We're gonna be like real life Schmeagles. Sh but like, you told me the other day, you haven't even watched Lord of the Rings. Um, no, I tried to watch it. You should be ashamed of yourself. It was, it's kind of long. Yeah, but aren't you a lover of documentaries and long form? cinematic footage film aren't you a film lover yeah but the story wasn't really hitting Man, for me is... at least at that time but that was a while ago so comment maybe I could section, give another chance comment section you love to see it I can't release I can't wait to release <laughs> this short to the world you, everyone has been liking you until you just said that until I said that yo Ugh, you make hey. me so angry <laughs> oh <laughs> What's up? I was, I was, bro, you, like I said, bro, you just make me passionate, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm kicking, <laughs> bro. Smacking the elbows, Throwing yo. my arms around, bro. Hey, is it funny? No, it's not funny at all. It's serious, <laughs> dude. That's a problem, dude. You, you, don't, take, bone, you, you know? don't take anything serious. <laughs> Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that one. I this apologize. Is, this is all your fault. I, I apologize. You know what you hate to see? People that cannot take <laughs> credibility when things are their fault. <laughs> My bad, bro. No, it's okay, Tim. That's it. Boom. It's, oh. a, it's okay, Tim. You Yo. needed, you needed to get me back, bro. You needed, <laughs> you needed to get a little win over me, Tim. Yeah. When I edit this, I'm gonna sample that part, bro. And turn it into what? <laughs> turn to turn to a beat, bro. Listen, we'll see. We'll see listen, what we do. You, bro. Won't, you won't be the first person <laughs> that stole something I said and put it in a song without my permission. Oh no! You won't be the first. <laughs> Guess who did it? Oh man! Guess who uh, did it? Um, it was a snippet of me complaining about oh. about him. He put it in a song. He and then he edited it to make it sound like I was praising him. Oh, that sounds like. An orc move right oh, there, yo. It's totally an orc move. Orc stereo, yo. And then yo. He, he had the audacity <laughs> to come to New Year's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, both of you, arrived at 11.45 p.m. Ready to go. You guys are the worst kind Let's of guests. You just arrive for the booze and the food 15 minutes before the party starts. And then you leave. You just wander off. Oh, Besides yeah. the point, he blamed me. <laughs> For <laughs> crashing his plane. Oh, he sure Bro, did, this is yo. one of the craziest things. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> like, let me tell you, dude. I've 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 seen a lot of crazy shit in my day, bro. Oh, but when man. that when he he basically wrote an essay for college about how me steering his plane for tw- no more than ten seconds, bro. Go find the clip since he stole my song, my voice for his song. You steal it from his YouTube channel and <laughs> stick it in here. There you go. There you go. He crashed the plane thirty minutes later. And then came down and was like, oh, I crashed into a mountain. But no, then I caught his stream and he was like, Jono crashed. Because Jono did this, I crashed the plane. Uh-huh. So I called him out. Oh, yeah. I called him out. I was like, this is unacceptable. He's like, proof. I wrote a whole research essay because the plane was forward like this for like five seconds. The gas moved to the front and everything just burnt away. I was like, bro. He sure did, though. He really did. I was did. like, bro, just accept <laughs> Accountability that you just can't fly a plane. Maybe Mark 2 is too fast for you, Orca Stereo. But it's the Concorde. Maybe Mark Mark 1 is too fast for you. You should be flying at the slow speeds in the smallest plane, but no. He wants to take big steps from the little 60-year-old <laughs> to the Concorde. The Concorde, yo. He said he was flying at 60,000 feet. Bro. That's like that's like the edge of space up there. That's me. It's space. Uh, listen, it's a That's long way. There, it's a long way to That's the top there. when you want to rock and roll. TV. <laughs> Deputy Dweezil has graced us. Oh yeah. With his presence, and Deputy Dweezil wishes the Dream Makers a happy New Year. Eh? Happy 2024. Deputy Dweez got, actually got a uh, pampered. Oh yeah. The first day of the new year. Mm. Got his nails done. Got the nails did. I the, see you. I got see his you. ears plucked. Got the ears plucked. They sprayed some nice perfume. Mm. So he smelled nice for a day. <laughs> Canine Noir. Which was nice. Le Dog. Le Dog. <laughs> so the Dweez is very happy. Very excited to be into 2024. Bro, I've been feeling tremendously grateful. You know, I was I said to someone else, I the irony of life is that you think the big things are the most important things. Yo, that's, that's for the nice. longest time and then suddenly you are just overwhelmed by this feeling of actually this whole time the small things have been the most important things but until you actually realize the magnitude of how far a little thing can move you that you take for granted every day you know we spend all our time like we were talking before the the podcast about just setting goals for the year but even like in that sense, we're, we're setting huge goals for ourselves because that's what we believe in. But at the same time, we need to set the little goals that are the little steps in between that allow us to put our lives in a position where we give ourselves this fighting chance. And that's simple stuff like health, like friends, yep. like family, like having a car. Like having a place to stay, like having a roof, like having food. Yes. These things that we just take for granted every day of our lives. Because at the end of the day, like, these are, like, this is why I'm so blessed is what I've realized. You know, I've been working on my visa, you know, my future's in the unknown. Yeah. But even in that sense, I just feel so grateful that I had the opportunity to come and do something so in- crazy and incredible. And I feel like for a majority of it, I was so living in the present and the now that I just wasn't available to take it in mm. and live in the moments and just realize like, wow, this is so crazy. And I was just on this mission, on the Concorde, going at Mark II, <laughs> full speed ahead. And suddenly... Sometimes life presents you with things where you have to actually stop and take a look back and just reflect. And you suddenly like slow down from Mark II and you are faced with just thinking about it all and looking at it. Um, And I just feel tremendous uh, gratefulness for this dog and for where I stay and just for this amazing opportunity I've had in my life to do this crazy thing. Man, I must say, it's yeah. been a true honor to be able to do this with you too, man. Oh, thanks, bro. Um, yeah. Sometimes, man, life just puts things in your way and it 
forces you to slow down and appreciate what you do have, you know. And I can, you know, I could say that 2023, man, it's been it's been a battle the whole year, you know. It's I feel like every year is a battle, but 2023 like felt like it was a battle, you know, against my against myself, you know, truly. And you know, I'm I'm happy that I've achieved so much growth in this year that's really going to set up my future. And I, and I, I wholeheartedly believe that like, the small steps, they really, um, they propel like the big moves and the big dreams. And the more that you can get good at doing the small things consistently over and over again, that's, re- that's what's, that's what's going to push you to get there, man. So, yeah, man. I feel like 2023, it was a year of like a bunch of small steps, a bunch of small steps. Also some big moves, don't get me wrong, man. A lot of big moves happened, but um, overall, I think that this next year and the years that follow, man, I feel really positive about like where things are going, man. So like whatever happens, you know, we made this dream happen, man. We, we talked about doing this podcast and we made it happen. Despite all the challenges that we face over this year, man, right? Yeah, and we, <laughs> and like I said, this is like we've been planning this for such a long time, and it's really exciting now because we've we really threw everything at the wall this past year, as as we we had to because let's face it, like we're coming onto this world out of nowhere, and we're like of a of an older time, and we need to learn how to make content. So we did every little thing that we thought we could possibly do to just try to get better at being on camera and trying to make better stuff. And that started as everything with this crazy circle of, of just trying to make stuff with the intent of, of like entertaining people. And the beautiful thing was, is that we learned that that was wrong mm-hmm. where actually the coolest thing we have to offer is ourselves. And the coolest thing we have to offer is us being us and talking to each other like we usually do, no BS, because that's what makes us unique and us and our perspective is beautiful. You know, you actually can't go into this thinking that you need to make stuff for people because you actually need to make stuff for you to be able to do it consistently. And if you can be yourself in the process and you can talk about things openly and you're open to learn, and you're open to grow. I mean, like we're at a place now where we just click on and go. I mean, it took us a long time, don't get it wrong, but we now have like a system in place that we can use and we know how to operate. Mm -hmm. And we can actually just sit back now and enjoy ourselves and talk about our, yeah, I'm just excited to watch this back in 2025, where we've just had one of the best years of our lives with many ups and downs in between. But I can say like one thing wholeheartedly, I think you and I are going to experience such tremendous growth in our lives this year with everything we, we're taking on and we want to do, both with Wild TSI and in our own endeavors. Indeed, man. And I think we are just going to be at a place in a year's time where we are so much better prepared to take on life, to chase our dream, to make our dream you know, and keep turning this ever evolving thing into reality and live a great positive life in the hopes of inspiring people to also live their best lives, but like also to realize that life is such a crazy roller coaster of ups and downs and that with every great story comes some of the biggest lows (laughs) that you can comprehend. And we want to encourage you to just keep moving forward Always have close people around you that can pick you up when you're down and you need that word of wisdom. It's the little things in life. And it's not about having a million friends. It's not about being the most popular. It's not about having the most followers. It's about doing something and feeling your purpose in what you do and being proud of it, whether it's a massive thing or a little thing. You need to just be proud of yourself for always moving forward. Even if it's an inch, even if it's a millimeter, you're always moving forward. And that is what we want to take into the coming year, 2024. Yes. 
man. Couldn't have said it better. Sorry, that was a bit of a long-winded... No, man. That's exactly what I needed to hear. 2024. Just keep moving. What, what was that? What was that one? Keep rolling, Who baby. was that? Who was that? Keep rolling, yo. Yeah. I like that. Keep, keep rolling. rolling, baby. I was going to say, uh, what's that her name? What's her name? The Fish. Dory. <laughs> keep <laughs> swimming, bro. Oh, dude. But no, bro. Well, don't, take, don't take my deep, my deep. Now we <laughs> plugging <laughs> Finding Nebo. <laughs> ne- ne- Nemo. Nebo. Oh, no. You, yeah, know, you know how they say <laughs> Neo? How do you say it in America? That old singer? That R&B singer? Neo. Yeah. 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 In South Africa, they say Neo. <laughs> Neo. That's what Aubrey used to say to me. It's not Neo, it's Neo. <laughs> it's not iRobots. It's iRobots. 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 Wow. You need to cut that out. I'm going to get shredded alive by my South African <laughs> brethren. <laughs> The world to me doesn't feel very happy right now. It really doesn't. You know, and to be able to create a positive place where people can come just for a little while to escape just the realities of just this terrifying world we live in and just the harshness of the world and the news that we're constantly bombarded by and the emails and the text messages. I was saying to TB today, I was, um, before I went to bed, I was just checking up on YouTube and I had an advert that came up that suddenly started talking about taxes. And this is 12 p.m. at night. And I feel like we live in this time where we're just not really able to shut off and to turn off our brains. We're constantly being bombarded by things all the time, thousands of things a day that we see. We're just oversaturated with things, trying to be sold things from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed. In fact, when we go to bed, we can't sleep now because we realize we need to do our taxes and now we're worried about our taxes. And it's just a, you know, I, I feel like it's such um, an unnatural world as a human to be in. This is getting a little deep. Like I, I was driving today and just thinking as people, because really we're just, you know, we started off as farmers, like where we had land and we would grow a family and we'd have this little community. And that was it, you know, like, were we really made to be connected all the time and on cell phones? When the irony, like I was thinking today, and this sounds really sad. <laughs> this sounds really sad. Like dating. I have not met somebody in the wild, which sounds so crazy to say, because that's how I, you know, you imagine like if you fall in love and meet someone, like right. you'll see them out somewhere and it's i can't remember the last time i've like fallen in love with somebody it was years ago where i met them and i just felt a connection yeah like we can't even go outside and talk to each other that's facts bro we have to swipe each other on a phone and therefore like we go out and and see each other it's just the world feels we live in this massive town and it feels so impersonal you walk past people they don't even look at you yeah and i feel like these things are so such a massive part of this like i want this thing to play a much less role smaller role in my life in 2024 yeah look here's the hinge notification now (laughs) <laughs> They've got me. They got you. They've up. got me. You see. They're in there. And <laughs> I just, you know, it's, but we work on this thing. We call people on this thing. We get 20, 30 emails that are spam every day yeah. that we have to, like now our inboxes are 7,000. We see these huge numbers. And then, I mean, obviously our fault too, because we're not the most organized people, but were people really supposed to have to worry about emails and mail and thousands of emails coming in a day and thousands of sales that you coming in a day. Yeah. You know, it's like, it just feels very unnatural to me. Mm. So I need, I need less of that. I need to live 
my life more like a human being and not like a robot because my time is valuable to me like time is like our most valuable asset and we need to optimize our time on this planet and in our days to the best of our ability which is really hard sometimes Mm -hmm. because that's where you need to be disciplined and you need to be aware that like what you're doing today is building towards the you of five years time and for a little while you're not going to really see much improvement or growth but if you're not keeping in mind that like the end goal is the person i'm going to be in five years time i'm going to be so proud of when like i'm doing the little steps now to become that person i don't know who that person is but i need that person to be a person yeah and like a human and to be connected to like the earth and gardening and outside and being in the sun and having real friendships where i can talk to people in real life mm. falling in love outside with somebody you've never seen before that you just have a connection with you know um meeting people it's like since covid happened i've been so isolated mm. and i'm not good at getting outside you know unless i really have to leave i'm just not good at it and i need to be better at it i need to go to the beach yeah man for a day just (laughs) because i need to go to the beach it sounds so silly to say out loud it really like but i i can't be the only one that is just just feeling trapped by all of this stuff yeah you know because it's like even when you're off you're still not off like you're still working your mind is working You've got people that need stuff. You've got people that are relying on you to, you know, <laughs> do the things. And it's just like, I just need, I just need some me time. But and it's not even me time. It's just like, I need a period where it's just like, just about me. You know, I need to focus on if it's getting rest, if it's literally shutting off my phone and going out and s- going out to the beach or going hiking or something. It's just like me time, something just to be more away from this device that's holding us down, yo. Cause man, I don't know about you, but but when I wake up and I see a bunch of texts, my brain is just uh, mush from the moment you wake up. And it's like, I don't, because then you gotta, you feel like you gotta respond. And it's just like, I just need a time where I can just not worry about this. And I can hide the text for a second and just find myself again. I was thinking, how many hours do we have to be alive? Mm. Like, if we saw it on a piece of paper, like, how many of those little squares of time would be a computer screen? Mm. Or just sitting in a chair at a desk and looking at a phone or replying to emails or just working at a desk all day in front of a, a chair, like, slumped in front of a screen? Or if you're in LA, man, driving. Driving? But Anywhere, at least right? at least then you're getting outside and you're seeing things and it's like, you know, you're really engaged, you know, it's like it's horrible, but like, bro, I'm sure if we looked at that map of driving and just screen time, like how oh, many man. hours of our life would have been stolen by a screen? Mm. Even to this point, like I've been on a cell phone probably more seriously since I was eighteen, which is a good ten years of my life. I've I've been invested in using this thing every day. Mm. And like, how many hours did it steal away from me doing something productive? How many hours did it steal away from me working on myself and working on my music and doing stuff when I should have been doing stuff? Mm. You know, it's like hindsight is like 2020 in this case for me. Because there's productive time behind the screen, which for us would be obviously editing and doing our music and stuff. But even then, we always romanticize this time where we could write the music and we could arrive and have it played by real people and experience real people where we're not the ones having to manufacture every part and having to figure out how the drums should sound and how the bass should sound. And now I need to learn how to think like a bass player because I'm not going to hire a bass player because the budget is too low Mm. because I can't actually afford to hire real people to play my music, you know? And then if I say to a producer, like, yo, wouldn't it be great if we had a band? They say, no, why? Your sounds sound good enough. 
Mm. But what if we lived in a time where my job as an orchestrator was to arrive, and this could still happen, you know, not to say it couldn't happen, but there was a time in the 60s, 70s, you know, we were just listening to this beautiful South African record, Let Um, which was recorded at the uh, A&M studios um, here in Los Angeles on the, in the 70s. Yeah. And just thinking how those people would arrive every day and they'd play music with people in a room. Real people. And having real people play your music will be a totally different experience. Like, I've never gotten to hear my music played by real people. 95% of it is a computer. And me sitting there, like, hitting a button and drawing out mod wheel lines to try and make it sound real. But it's probably a tenth of what the real thing would sound like if you were playing drums on it and you added your little piece of yourself because you can't recreate someone's feel yeah. and their little like the little synchronicities in their playing and the lines they do and just the way they think about it it's that adds their dimension to your song as opposed to the whole song just being your selfish dimension it's like these are what I want the drums to sound like. But if a drummer heard it, he'd probably, they'd probably say like, oh, these drums are whack. Like I wouldn't have played the drums like this because I'm not actually a drummer. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about the in-betweens and the ghost notes and the, I'm trying to recreate them because no one wants to give me a budget to, to hire a drummer. Yeah. Every drummer has his own, own play on the pocket and whatever. So or if you bring somebody who's playing strings the way they hold their bow and the way they bring out that sound like it matters it's it's not something that a computer can like easily recreate or yourself can recreate you need to have the group the group i don't know if group thinks the right word but it's totally still cohesive of it you know and it's them being in the same room at the same time feeling the nerves feeling the vibes yep. feeling whatever they're feeling it's the performance. Mm -hmm. It's not just quantized, like, rubbish. Right, right. Like, set to grit. That's a goal of mine for 2024. I want to record some music with real people. Come on. I want to make a, an album where it's just TB, myself, someone on keys, and someone on bass. Come on. And I want us to go into a studio for eight hours. And I want to write all the songs before, and we just go jam the songs and, like, do a live album. Because I've, I've never gotten to do that before. I did when I was younger. When I was a teenager, I got some experience doing that with my band. Mm -hmm. But it was amazing. I miss that. I miss just um, the connection of people. Yes. Not living such a, a lonely life. And it's not to ask you to feel sorry. Please, don't feel sorry for me. This is just me talking out what I want the year to be. I think that's something you realize is that you don't actually want people to feel sorry for you because you asked for this. True. I asked to be here. I asked to take on this mammoth journey. You know, it was my decision. And we have to live with our decisions and we have to live with our past mistakes. We have to live with our successes. Amen to that, bro. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And we have to just put systems in place in our life that help us address the little things. And I think that's something that TV and I have also been talking about, even with dealing with the connected world. Maybe it's just that we don't have the systems in place yet where we, we're able to optimize just the, in, the inflow of stuff. Yeah. Because we actually haven't sat down in our lives and just really thought out the same way we got the studio together. What do we need to do for this thing to work? And what system do we need to create in our lives? or put in place to give us that time or give us the freedom to do something else mm -hmm. or give us the freedom to scale up what we're doing. Yep. I feel like this is the beginning of the post-COVID chapter. I can't speak for your life, but I feel for my life, this COVID was a period. It just so happened to coincide perfectly with my move to LA. Yeah. And I've now lived in LA for nearly four years which is insane to think about. Pretty, pretty insane. My fourth, uh, the 2020, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Wow. So yeah. your entire LA experience has been COVID. COVID, uh, totally. <laughs> Since I moved, I moved the first week COVID happened, I moved oh, to LA. Man. And 
I am now ready to close the chapter of 2023. Kiss 2023 goodbye, bro. You know what we're calling this episode? What's that? Kissing 2023 goodbye. I'm going to be there like this. <laughs> Love to see it. And yeah. we're kissing it goodbye. We're closing the chapter. I'm throwing my shoe at it, bro. <laughs> Get on out of here. <laughs> That's what I thought. It could either be that or 2023 in the middle. And you and I are just like <laughs> yeah, man. going ham, bro. Boom. But uh, guys, we hope you join us and have a wonderful year filled with health, prosperity, happiness, ups and downs, tough lessons. Um, and we hope you rock with us for 2024 and beyond as we grow the Dream Makers. You guys are like the OG dream makers you don't realize now sometime soon you're gonna look at the view number it's gonna be four four digits Ooh, come four on digits sometime you're gonna look it's gonna be five digits but for now you will forever be the og dream makers and you love to see that so tb unless you have anything else to add baby i've got nothing man I couldn't have said it better yo thank you guys so much for being a part of our journey and yeah that's all i got bro I guess we'll see you guys in the next one. See you later, Dream Makers. Peace. Love. Sits. <laughs>